So are you guys ready for another one tonight? Uh, so I have found uh, some information about Eve. Somebody had asked me about that after I had made the video about Adam and breaking down his name. Uh, and so he had asked me about Eve. And so I thought, well, you know, I'll take a look at it. So when I started looking at the story, you know, God created uh, Eve uh, in the Bible with Adam's rib. And uh, so, but see, God created Adam from himself. So if we take a look at the tree of life, uh, this is Kether. This is the infinite or endlessness. This manifests Adam. And then Adam gives a part of himself and manifests Eve. And if we take a look at the Zohar here, it says, So the cause of causes made ten sephiroth and called Keter the source. So this is the source. And there is no end to the welling of its light. Therefore, he called himself endlessness. And he has no likeness or image. There is no vessel there able to conceive him or have any knowledge of him at all. Therefore, it has been said of him, do not seek that which is inconceivable to you, nor search that which is hidden from you. And down here it says, After that he made a small vessel that is the Yud, which is filled with the source, and he called it a spring, uh, a spring welling wisdom. So this is the, uh, the spring, and this is where the river came out of Eden, right? And he called himself in it wise. So when we see this story of creation of Adam and Eve and everything, these are not separate things. These are divisions within something very, you know, which is the container of all. And so then he made a large vessel and called it the sea. And he called it Bina, understanding, which is right here. And this is the lightning flash uh, that moves down the tree. It moves down like that uh, all the way down to uh, Malkuth, which is the kingdom and earth. And he called himself an understanding one. So as you can see, he's calling himself these things and all these things because it's really a division of himself. So he made this rib, or he took this rib from Adam and made Eve. So in other words, he took something from Adam and made Eve with it. And so I decided to take, up the, to, uh, take a look at the word rib and see what I could find out about it. This is the Strong's Concordance right here, and this is the uh, Hebrew word for rib, as you can see, uh, and the rib which the Lord to, uh, God had taken from man it made, uh, made he a woman, and it's H6763, and you can see it's a rib. So here are the letters, and so this is amazing stuff you're going to see right here because once again, it's telling a story of the process of the creation of Eve by knowing this one word. So, we take a look at the first letter, and this is uh, Sade. I, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing these correctly yet, so give me a break on that. I'll learn it over time. But, right here it says, This Kabbalistic rabbi Isaac Luria maintained that God created the world by an act of simsum, a voluntary withdrawal or, or contraction, in order to make room for his creation. Since Simpson begins with the letter Sade, Loria reasoned that the first creative act was a voluntary humbling of God as he made room for the other forms of life he was going to create. Now, isn't that interesting from this one letter? And this is even more interesting right here. The mate of Aleph. So this is Aleph. This is the groom, and the groom is the fool. The fool coming into being right here with wisdom. So here's the bride. So the mate of letter Aleph. This is seen somewhat in the letter forms themselves and suggests that God and his redeemed creation will be joined together in love since Aleph represents the creator and Saudi represents the reflection of his image and allusion to call it the bride of the Messiah. Now, if we think of this as a co in a cosmic sense, we have the spring coming through the gate into the sea, and it's creating the sea. Now, the sea becomes understanding, and it becomes a reflection of the invisible, which is what it's saying over there. 
It's a reflection of his image. Now, so wisdom is also Sophia. So when we take a look at what's contained in the nebula, uh, or if we take a look at what the reflection of wisdom is, wisdom or hulkma is a representation of the brain because it ri uh, Bina, which is in the heart, is considered to be an understanding heart. It rises to Hulkma, which is like the brain. So it is a reflection of that. So it's the other side of the brain. Okay? So that's what we're looking at when we're looking at the uh, nebula is a reflection of what's coming through there, which is uh, it's a reflection of uh, Hulkma or wisdom, and wisdom is the brain. Really interesting stuff. So we have that out of one letter, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is Lamed, right? So this is the second letter inside Rib. And it comes from the meaning to learn or teach. Lamed and heart knowledge. Lamed can be seen as an acronym for Lev Miven Da'at, meaning a heart that understands knowledge. In other words, the goal of learning and teaching Lamed is heart knowledge. Moreover, it is the only letter allowed to ascend above the other letters in sacred writings. Lamed represents the prominence of learning and understanding to the Jewish heart. And if you want to make sure, if you want to see the proof that Bina does represent the heart, well, all you got to do is go look up understanding in the Bible and you get these things that come back for you. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. I've given thee a wise and understanding heart. God gave uh, Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart. For thou hast hid their heart from understanding. The wisdom is in the inward parts. And who, are, who has given understanding to the heart? The mouth shall speak of wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. The ear is unto wisdom, the heart unto understanding. As you can see, um, the Bible is, this is the same code. It's showing us this code inside the Bible in all of these things. So this is the brain. This is the heart. But it's also the other side of the brain. Because um, it, it's a reflection of what we're seeing here. Heart meaning uh, a heart that understands knowledge. Now, da'at, when you reach this point right here and you connect these two together, then you are reaching knowledge, okay, which is da'at, a heart that understands knowledge. So let's take a look at the last one here. So the first one that we saw has to do with Creation coming into existence and making room for it has to do with the mate of Aleph, the bride, and it has to do with an understanding heart. And it's a reflection of wisdom. In other words, it is, uh, it is an understand, it understands the wisdom that, and listens to the wisdom that's uh, uh, speaking to it. Wisdom cries out, if you remember. It cries out at the gate. If you, if you're, so that is why the, the mouth, the mouth shall speak of wisdom, because wisdom cries out at the gate. And Bina, being in the understanding, it listens. It, it lends its ear to wisdom. Now, wisdom is the firstborn of the infinite, because this is endlessness. He's endlessness. He is the firstborn. Wisdom is the firstborn. But it, but he and this are really the same thing. He and the Father are one. So if we go over here to the Bible and we take a look at what also represents wisdom, which is the firstborn of the infinite, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Christ, the visible image of the invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, because as you can see, it's dividing itself up as it goes down that tree. So, Christ is also the representation of uh, wisdom. And so is uh, Osiris. Osiris came as Orion, the firstborn over all creation. So, and this is also a representation of Adam and Eve. And that's why when we see uh, Genesis, and then we see what's inside uh, the New Testament, it's basically a copy of what's in the Old Testament is telling the same story. And it's they're both Kabbalistic. So, let's take a look at the last letter real quick. The last letter is Ion. And it means I. It means to see, to understand and obey. What is an under, what understands? Well, Bina. Bina is understanding. Though concealed in the Torah, the spiritual eye, which is what this is talking about, can behold the presence of this radiance, but only by means of the inner eye uh, given by the Ruach ha HaKodesh. I am sometimes describing two eyes connected to a common optic nerve that leads to the brain, and understanding leads to the brain. The two eyes represent choice or the actions of the will, the heart. So here we go. So the, all the three letters here, ayin, like the letter aleph, is a silent letter. It is said that ayin sees but does not speak and therefore represents the attitude of humility. And this is why when we take a look at the tree of life, all the sephira on the tree of life have virtues and they have vices. Well, the virtue for bina is silence. And if you ever wondered why it says in the New Testament uh, some things, I think it's Timothy. Uh, it's it's in one of it's like Second Timothy or or one of these. It says the woman should be quiet because it's actually referring to Bina, which means understanding and the virtue of understanding is silence, because it means that you're listening to the wisdom that's being spoken to you. Kind of deep, huh? So the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body. So here we go. This is referring to the spiritual eye, the primeval light, this uh, spiritual light of God. So what it's really referring to is the Holy Spirit. So what we have up here is we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when you see these people touch their head and both their shoulders, now you know why they're doing that, because it's Kabbalistic. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, there you go. With the word rib, I told you the story of uh, the psychological way and also the cosmic way that uh, Eve was created from Adam. And now you understand that it's not about uh, two humans um, and then he took a rib from somebody. Now you know what rib actually means. And um, I suspect there's probably a mo lot more stuff like this in the Torah or the first uh, the first books of the Bible and that they're going to leave. I mean, they're going to give all kinds of information out of them, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, I'll talk to you soon.